Interactive with X-Ray, where we bring trading experts to you live in the platform. Choose sessions, watch live market analysis, and catch up on your favorite market insights anytime. Ask questions and go one-to-one -one with leading experts on gold, oil, FX, crypto, indices, and equities. X-Ray, your very own analysis team, right at your fingertips. That's higher trading from MarketX. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our Insider Trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketX. What's happening, beautiful people? How are you guys doing? Today, I want to talk to you about five facts about trading stocks as CFDs. For the ones of you that don't know me yet, my name is Adrian. For the last 10 years, guys, I've worked in many retail and institutional forex brokerages in Europe. Join me in this fantastic journey and find out the secret corners of forex trading from top industry specialists. Learn what most forex brokers don't want you to know by watching our daily broadcast, guys. And if you like what you see, like, share, subscribe on our YouTube channel and support us in delivering more great content. I'll give you exactly 30 seconds to smash that subscribe button and then we can get started. Come on, don't be haters, smash that subscribe button. Okay, five facts on trading stocks at CFDs in 2021, coming up. Right, and here we are, everyone. Five facts about trading stocks as CFDs, guys. I decided to record this short video well, for two reasons. One, the Reddit scandal. Okay, by now, every single one of you must have uh, seen the news on, um, on your TV channels. Okay, there's something going on with stocks. And the second reason is we're in the middle of the earnings season, guys. A lot of traders might be pushed or might want to trade the stocks as CFDs. But before you do that, let's have a quick look at the five things you should know about trading stocks as CFDs before you get started. So I'm going to start with number one, guys, which is stocks are designed to go up by nature. Okay, think about it. Once a company went public, once that uh, that stock got listed on the stock exchange, then the main interest of the company is to keep pushing the, the share price as high as possible. Now, occasionally, you're going to have pullbacks. Yeah, you're going to have meltdowns in the market. You're going to have a bad news that, uh, that comes out about the company that will typically drive the share price down. However, that might be a great buying opportunity, guys. Remember, stocks are designed to go up on the long run. You can look at any stock, at any chart, guys. Look at it on a daily chart, a weekly or a monthly chart and zoom out a lot and see what happened in the last 10 years with the stocks, what happened in the last eight years with the stocks. Okay, and that will be the answer to your question. You will understand that stocks are designed to go up on the long run. Now let's move on to number two, guys, which is as important as, uh, as number one. Stocks are only traded for eight hours a day, guys. They are listed on a specific stock exchange, which typically only operates eight hours a day. So if you're planning to trade stocks, guys, you're either going to have to scalp the markets, which means trade the, the price movement within the operating hours of that exchange or trade long term. OK, trading stocks over 12 hours, over 24 hours might not be the best thing to do. OK, so stock traders, if you want to start trading stocks, please remember stocks are typically traded eight hours a day, only during the, the working hours of that specific exchange that listed those uh, specific stocks. OK, so they're going to move slower. Let's move on to number three, guys, and see what else uh, is happening with stocks. Number three, guys, stocks have lower leverage than uh, currency pairs and commodities, guys. Okay, they do have a higher leverage than um, current uh, than uh, cryptocurrencies, but they do have a lower leverage than uh, the typical asset classes, the most traded asset classes, which are forex and commodities. You might want to take this into consideration if you're looking to start trading stocks, guys. So, what does the leverage mean? Once again. 
right the higher the leverage the less money you will have to put in as collateral from your side but be careful that's a double-edged sword guys yeah very easy you could go into profits with only a trade of 200 to 300 dollars but you might go into losses faster if you don't get the direction right so very very careful in using the leverage when you're trading stocks when you're trading all asset classes okay all asset classes have a different leverage and all asset classes have different margin requirements yeah margin is that collateral amount which you put in as uh, as collateral as traders okay so lower leverage usually means higher investment from your side all right all right let's move on to number four guys and see what else is a fact about trading stocks stocks are less volatile than currency pairs that's correct currency pairs are very very volatile guys because many many factors affect the exchange uh, rate between two currencies yeah imports exports uh, tourism private businesses a lot of factors when it comes to stocks though only a few factors affect the share price. Yeah, and these factors, these important factor basically is investor sentiment. Whenever you have a bad news coming out from the company, okay, investors tend to lose hope in that company, at least for a limited amount of time. So they're going to start selling their stocks. Yes, selling their shares in the company, which usually translates to a lot of selling power, which usually translates to the price going down. Okay, so being less volatile than currency pairs, guys, you're going to see less swings happening over a long period of time. So how to trade stocks? Keep an eye on the lower point and you might want to look careful and consider that as a potential good entry for a long position. Okay, I know it sounds complicated, but it's not. Whatever goes up must come down. Whatever goes down must come back up. Now, knowing that the general trend of stocks is usually upwards, okay, any meltdown in the market will translate into a perfect buying opportunity if the fundamentals remain sound okay so what moves stock prices is fundamentals the news the unexpected which takes me to number five guys which is stocks can be predictable stocks can indeed be predictable over a uh, long period of time how is that it's very easy to keep track of the um of the books of the company because they're public every quarter every four months every three months the company will come forward and, and tell you what are the plans for the next quarter how did they do in terms of earnings per share and revenue in the last three months knowing what companies will look to do in the near future okay can be translated into companies being quite predictable Okay, obviously, I'm uh, I'm talking about the big, big companies. Yeah, I'm not talking about the very small companies, the ones that just got listed on the stock exchange. However, they could be the best investment ever if you know how to read the fundamentals. Now, also very important, guys, when you're trading stocks, you should consider a portfolio of stocks because not all companies tend to do well every single day. So in order for you to balance any potential losses with potential profits, you should consider creating a portfolio of, uh, of stocks. Now, if you want more details about stock trading, about uh, cryptocurrencies, about Forex or commodities, guys, feel free to contact us on uh, instructfx.com. We also have an ebook which you can download for free absolutely free all you have to do is go on instructfx.com download the the, um, the ebook and this is it if you want to get in touch with us guys drop us an email at info at instructfx.com or if you want my direct line guys the chart whisper at gmail.com feel free to drop us an email let us know what you're struggling with and we will make sure your voice will be heard through our daily broadcast this is it from my side guys i'm going to take a 30 second break and then we're coming back live with the charts of the day, the signals of the day, and Neil Wilson from the heart of London with the latest news on the UK market. Stay tuned. Go interactive with X-Ray, where we bring trading experts to you live in the platform. Choose sessions, watch live market analysis, and catch up on your favorite market insights anytime. Ask questions and go one-to-one -one with leading experts on gold, oil, FX, crypto, indices, and equities. X-Ray, your very own analysis team, right at your fingertips. That's higher trading from MarketsX. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our Insider Trades tool. 
see who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's Higher Trading from MarketX. Boom, and we're live. What's happening, beautiful people? Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Europe, and welcome, everyone, to our live stream. Happy Monday, everyone. How are you guys doing? Let me know how you're doing in the comments box below. I hope you have an amazing, amazing start of a week and an amazing week uh, ahead of you. Now, let, uh, let me know how you're doing, guys, if you're struggling with anything. And if you like what you see, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and support us in delivering more great content, guys. It helps us a lot. One click, one subscribe, and it means a lot uh, to us. Be supportive. Don't be haters. Come on. It's only Monday. Now, let's get down to business, guys, and see what is happening in the markets today, 1st of February, 2021. The Reddit crowd takes on silver after GameStop, pushing the price of, uh, of the metal to $30 an ounce. ExxonMobil and Chevron stock price rallies as merger talks boost investors' confidence. U.S. Democrats reject the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill proposed by Joe Biden. Where do we take it from here? Crude oil ranges around $50 to uh, 50 a barrel and Bitcoin gains after Elon Musk comments. Steady at uh, $33,900. U.S. markets open. Coming up. Right, guys, and we're back. Happy Monday once again, guys. Monday, 1st of February, 2021. What a week, what a week we had, and what a week is expected. Let's have a quick look at the economic calendar, guys, and in a few minutes, we're going to have Neil Wilson joining us from the heart of London with the latest news from... Uh from London. So I'm going to start with the economic calendar. I have to let you know what is happening in the markets, guys. We had a lot of... Um, uh, net positions uh, announced at 8.30 GMT plus 2... Um, this morning about an hour ahead of the uh, european uh, markets open and at nine o'clock gmt plus two guys we started with the german retail sales uh, which came out uh, negative 9.6 percent versus an expectation of negative 2.6 percent from uh, from consensus pushing the european currency lower today shortly after that we had the retail sales uh, on the Swiss franc, which came out 4.7%. There was no forecast on this one, but the previous was only 1.8%. Spanish manufacturing PMI came out at uh, 15 minutes after 10 o'clock this morning, guys, with 49.3 uh, versus an expectation of 50.9. So far, two uh, announcements in the red for the, uh, the euro, which has been suffering the entire day, guys. Then we had the Italian manufacturing producer uh, manufacturing index, the French manufacturing PMI, yeah, which both came out positive, giving a bit of hope to the uh, to the already subdued European currency. We had the German manufacturing PMI, which also came out in uh, in green at fifty seven point one percent versus an expectation of fifty seven flat. Now we also had the manufacturing PMI. Um, in the eurozone announced at 11 o'clock gmt plus two and at 11 30 we had the manufacturing pmi on the british pound which again both came out green 54.8 for the euro and 54.1 uh, for the pound yeah versus an expectation of uh, 54.7 for the euro yeah and an expectation of uh, 54.9 for the pound we also had the at lunchtime the unemployment rate in the eurozone guys which uh, came out 8.3 percent no change was uh, was announced now i find this a bit hard to believe a bit difficult to believe considering that a lot of european countries went through severe lockdown in the last couple of months yeah most of them or some of them are still in lockdown as things stand right now so Unemployment, an unemployment rate of uh, only 8.3% and unchanged in uh, in the last couple of months. I find it a bit hard to believe, but let's see. Let's see. Maybe they're going to review the numbers. Now, in 28 minutes from now, we're going to have the manufacturing PMI for January announced on the uh, on the US dollar, yeah, followed by the ISM manufacturing employment for January in 43 minutes. Also in, uh, in 43 minutes, okay, 
Uh, we're going to have the IM, ISM manufacturing uh, PMI for, for January. Yes, yeah, so one is the ISM manufacturing employment and the other one is uh, ISM manufacturing PMI. Now, at 2100 hours, guys, we're going to have uh, FOMC uh, statements. And uh, 10 minutes past 9 o'clock, uh, GMT Plus 2, again, we're going to have an FOMC statement. This is how we open the week this week, guys, with lots of announcements and lots of uh, manufacturing PMI data coming out in the economic calendar. Now, it's not all about the uh, the economic calendar, guys. We are in the earnings season. Okay, We're in the middle of the earnings season, so uh, we need to have a look at the earnings calendar and see which big companies will announce their um, their earnings per share and revenue this week. Now, today, uh, nothing big is happening today. Uh, we only have uh, four or five um, large cap companies announcing. But tomorrow, guys, we're going to have Amazon and Alphabet. Yeah, the ex-Google announcing now. And Pfizer as well. Now, in terms of, uh, sorry, earnings per share, we're looking at Amazon with uh, $7.16 predicted by consensus and the uh, revenue of uh, $119.68 billion. And this sends the, the company's market cap to $1.61 trillion. Whoa. Now, Alphabet, yeah, the, the Google company, earnings per share expected at $15.68, guys, and, uh, and a revenue forecast at $52.89 billion. Yeah, which will take the market cap of the company at $1.24 trillion, guys. Now, also Alphabet uh, C, yeah, um, again, another Google uh, owner, 15.7 uh, uh, earnings per share expected and a uh, revenue of $52.89 billion. Wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. Also, tomorrow, guys, we're going to have Pfizer announcing. Okay, Pfizer is expected to do really, really well considering. Okay, um, 0.5183 is the earning per share uh, forecast, uh, and the uh, revenue forecast is $12.24 billion, guys, Okay, which will take the market cap of the company to $199.6 billion. Also, ExxonMobil will... Um, We'll announce their uh, earnings tomorrow, guys, and they are expected to come at uh, nine cents. Okay, and um, a revenue forecast of forty-five point ninety-seven billion dollars. Okay, British Petroleum is also reporting tomorrow again. One cent is expected for uh, earnings per share and a revenue of fifty-two point um, eight nine two million dollars. Okay, this is what is happening on uh, on Tuesday, guys. Let me scroll down a bit. Okay, we're going to have Harley Davidson announcing on, on Tuesday as well. Now, on Wednesday, guys, we're going to see PayPal Holdings announcing, okay, which is expected to do really well, uh, 0.99 cents and a half um, earnings per, uh, per share forecast and a revenue forecast of $6.08 billion for, uh, for PayPal. We're going to have Qualcomm announcing as well, uh, GSK. Uh, what else? What else? What else? eBay will announce uh, as well, which again, eBay is expected to do fairly well, guys. 0.8296 in terms of uh, earnings per share with a revenue forecast of 2.7 billion. Okay, and a few um, a few other big uh, big names will uh, will report as well. On Thursday, guys, we're gonna have uh, again big big names. We're gonna have uh, Ford Motors uh, reporting. We're gonna have uh, microchips. We're gonna have uh, Royal Dutch Shell, okay, reporting. T-Mobile US already reported the, the numbers uh, came out in red. Yeah, a bit of uh, disappointment from uh, from the T-Mobile uh, side of things. Okay, let's see. Let's see what else is happening uh, on the markets on, on Thursday or Friday, guys. Friday, again, uh, nothing big is happening. No big uh, big names will, uh, will report. Okay, so we're going to have to take whatever the markets uh, give us. Yes, yeah, so once again, we're going to have PayPal. Okay, we're going to have uh, ExxonMobil, uh, Pfizer, Alphabet, uh, Amazon, okay, reporting. So quite a few, uh, quite a few options for the week. Now, let's see what happened in the Eurozone, guys, as it's only Monday and we need to know roughly what direction to take for the Euro for the week. The uh, Eurozone uh, unemployment was stable at 8.3% of the uh, workforce in December. The European uh, Union Statistics Office Eurostat said earlier today, despite continued uh, COVID lockdowns in most Eurozone countries. This is exactly what I was uh, telling you a minute ago, guys. It's, uh, it's weird, but let's see. Maybe they're going to revise the numbers. 
Still, Eurostat said 13.671 million people were out of work in the 19 countries sharing the euro in December, up from 13,616 million in November. Well, duh, obviously. Now, in Belgium, Ireland, Cyprus, Lithuania, Netherlands, Portugal, and Slovakia, the number of people unemployed actually fell in December, but it rose slightly in other countries such as Germany, France, and Italy. To keep unemployment levels down during the pandemic, Eurozone countries have been uh, using uh, furlough systems where governments subsidize a portion of wages to help uh, employers keep staff on their payrolls. This prevents layoffs and means production capacity can uh, more easily rebound. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed on, uh, on that one. Now, I have a news, guys, from Elon Musk. I have a big, big news on Bitcoin. Okay, on the, the most popular cryptocurrency ever. Okay, and uh, with this announcement, with this announcement, hopefully you will understand how easy it is to manipulate the price of cryptocurrencies or stocks. Yeah, the the asset classes that are mainly driven by the news. Yeah, by statements like this. So, Elon Musk says uh, Bitcoin is on the verge of being more widely accepted. Are you for real? I mean, we already know that. Okay, from. Um, Okay, it's it's. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to make any mean comments. It's just Monday, guys. I'm feeling very, very zen today. Fingers crossed. But statements like this, yeah, articles like this do piss me off. Like I keep talking every day and every week about uh, how Bitcoin is more and more accepted widely. Okay, and all of a sudden we see uh, a very, very rich person, yeah, that makes a statement like this, and the entire world goes bowing yeah to their uh to their feet like they said they reinvented the wheel we all know that yes bitcoin is on the verge of being more widely expected uh, accepted but what is behind this statement guys and in the next couple of minutes hopefully you will understand better what i'm trying to say now let's have a quick look at um at the article and then i'll start tearing it apart now i said i'm zen today guys so uh I'm, I'm gonna try and behave now billionaire elon musk said on monday bitcoin was on the verge of being more uh, widely accepted um, among investors as he expressed his support for the cryptocurrency in a chat on social media app uh, clubhouse that drew thousands of listeners that's the whole point uh behind these uh, these statements guys the comments followed uh, his use of uh, bitcoin tag on his twitter profile on friday which pushed the cryptocurrency up 14 percent aha this is where where he's getting with this and and see the bigger picture guys okay now um elon musk ceo of tesla um, is known for making comments on twitter that move markets and he acknowledged this uh, during his debut on the um, invitation only app clubhouse i am a supporter of bitcoin he said no doubt about it after you doubled your your wealth yeah after purchasing um bitcoin of course you're a supporter but six months ago a year ago where were you this is the thing i was a little slow on the uptake he said uh, adding he should have bought it 80 years ago i think bitcoin is on the verge of getting broad acceptance by conventional finance people now i'm not disputing his statements yes that's correct we talk about it every day guys you probably know this every day and you're not the the richest man on earth okay but we're talking about the same Elon Musk that six months ago, a year ago, did not even know that Bitcoin exists in any of his tweets, in any of his, um, yeah, his announcements. Now, a couple of months ago, let's say he, um, again, he posted, he tweeted something that he is considering exchanging half of his uh, net worth into Bitcoin. What happened with Bitcoin price shortly after that? Exactly. So, this is an example of how uh, rich people can just uh, release a statement yeah, that could move the price of an asset. In this case, it moved it up by 300%. Now, Bitcoin last traded up 3.7% at uh, 34,390, having surged over 300% in 2020. All right. On the wide-ranging chat, uh, Musk discussed uh, memes, uh, Mars, his companies, and vaccines, among other topics. He also interviewed uh, Vladimir Tenev, co-founder of online stock uh, broker app Robinhood, which is under fire for uh, blocking retail investors from purchasing GameStop. Okay, very, very important what's happening, guys. And Neil Wilson should give us more details about it in a few minutes. GameStop uh, stock uh, surged about 400% in the past week after retail investors uh, banded together to buy shares in the US video 
video game retailer, sending hedge funds scrambling to cover losing bets. Yes. Tenev said the market uh, rumor was uh, untrue that Citadel Securities, the market making arm of billionaire hedge fund uh, manager Ken Griffin, has uh, had pressured Robinhood into blocking retail investors. Duh, what do you expect them to say? Yeah, 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 we're doing dodgy business together. We make a few millions and the rest of you can just, you know lose your money of course they're gonna they're gonna say that that's just false uh, tenev said uh, adding that robin hood uh, temporarily halted trading to meet regulatory capital requirements there is a slim chance that that is true guys okay now uh elon musk last week uh, tweeted uh game stonk which uh, many in the market um, interpreted as an apparent show of uh, of support for small investors stonks is a tongue-in-cheek term for stocks uh, widely used on social media elon musk also chatted about covid 19 vaccines saying he expected an avalanche of uh, of them soon he added that authorities should focus on giving out the first dose of vaccines soon and worry about the second shot later to speed things up Mm. I don't know what happens if uh, you get the first shot of the vaccine and um, when you're supposed to get the second shot within three weeks, you delay it by another three weeks or six weeks or nine weeks. I'm not sure what is the impact on the human body for, uh, for that, but who knows? He might have a point. Now, I know many of you will judge me. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but... I'm trying to see things from a different perspective, guys, okay? Because we see nowadays market manipulation is, is like huge okay we saw what happened a few days ago with uh yeah with the gamestop uh stock we saw what happened with silver we saw the spike in gold okay on uh on thursday we were live when we were talking about that now you know what i find weird first of all as i said a minute ago six months ago a year ago two years ago i didn't see elon musk too getting too deep into um into bitcoin as soon as he announced that he's he's willing to exchange half of his uh, net worth into cryptocurrency we saw what happened with the price okay the price doubled tripled in value in a few days now uh, we also had a look at the charts and saw what happened after uh, that uh, impressive rally okay and we saw the price calming down we saw the markets calming down why it's easy everyone that managed to open buy positions before the price uh, rallied Okay, they closed their buy positions. They're starting to cash out profits. And then obviously, yeah, like whatever is hyperficially uh, inflated, it will deflate. Yes, slowly, slowly. Now, for uh, average uh, traders, for average people like uh, like you and I, yeah, having two, three, four, ten bitcoins, yeah, this uh, price swing might not seem a lot. Yeah, it's still a lot. If we're talking about uh, 10 bitcoins, we might be looking at, what seven thousand dollars ten thousand dollars but imagine how big that impact is for someone that has billions into bitcoin okay one small uh, movement let's say a thousand dollars in in bitcoin five hundred dollars in bitcoin and that guy is potentially losing tens of millions okay and this is the um, the thing every time a rich guy yeah we're looking at bill gates we're looking at elon musk we're looking at uh jeff bezos any anyone that's that rich okay even um uh, donald trump okay and makes a statement like that it will be felt in the price okay so this is my only problem with these uh with these statements we saw in the past more uh more famous people yeah the ceo of uh, of jp morgan yeah making similar statements so it's not a bad thing. It's just a bit of, uh, of market manipulation from my point of view. Okay, this is my humble opinion. You don't have to, uh, to follow my opinion, but I'm really curious on, on your opinion on this one. Right, this is it. Now, let's welcome uh, Neil Wilson from the heart of London, guys, and see uh, what's his take on, uh, on these uh, brave statements and on the state of the markets. Stay tuned. We're coming back like in th live in 30 seconds with... Um, I wanted to say with Elon Musk, with uh, Neil Wilson, Chief Market Analyst at Marques.com. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our insider trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right, and as promised, guys, we have uh, Neil Wilson with us from the heart of London. Happy Monday, Neil. Good afternoon. How are you? Hello, hello. How are you? 
I'm good. I'm I'm very upset today for some reason. I don't know why I'm picking on everyone. How are you? Yeah, I'm I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, it's another another bright start to the week. So uh, interesting start, of course, with silver moving, um, as you've been discussing. So yeah, it's uh, another another um, interesting uh, week ahead of us. I think. We saw a lot of countries having a bit of difficulties uh, in terms of the vaccine. Uh, Neil, what is the situation in the UK with the uh, with the vaccine? Any shortages so far? No, not so far. I think the UK is doing uh, a rather good job of vaccinating people, at least with the first dose. Um, we're we're now you know comfortably um, comfortably ahead of Europe in terms of vaccinating people, and I think we're you know we are. Um, I think we're up to about nine million or something like that. So really, really getting uh, a lot of doses in. I think we had. Uh, nearly 600,000 doses recorded yesterday um, in a single 24-hour period. So, you know, progress being made. And, you know, we've got, um, I think we're on track to deliver those 15 million doses by the 15th of February. So hopefully um, the, uh, you know, the sort of hospital admissions, that will take care of basically 90% of hospital admissions. And therefore, we can sort of quickly move forward back to some sort of semblance of normality thereafter. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Now, today I want to approach the hottest topic now, the Robin Hood uh, issue and the Reddit crowd. I chose not to talk about it on Thursday or Friday as we didn't have all the details about it, but today we do. So let's try and explain everyone what happened last week. Are you up for it? We can give it a go. <laughs> all right. So we had a group of retail traders basically called the uh, Wall Street Bets. Bear with me for a second. Let me bring in them uh, on the screen. Where are they? There they are. Okay. Okay. So this is the Reddit group. Yeah, the Wall Street Bets that uh, took on the hedge funds and managed to pump a couple of stocks to the point where the big hedge funds were losing a ton of money. Yeah, and the trading platform called uh, Robin Hood suspended trading for retail traders. Correct so far? They did percent for some of these stocks, yeah. All right. Since then, various investigations have started. Uh, it's all over the news. Yeah, it's all over uh, social media channels. Okay, we saw SEC starting an investigation on the legality of the platform suspending the trading activity for retail traders. Have I missed out on anything so far, Neil? Um, I would just say there's been uh, some of the moves in the market have been exceptional. And, and you know, it's... Um, it's interesting to see how we, we, we've got into silver today and that's that's really um you know it's one thing when you move one stock a couple of you know a couple hundred percent is one you know it's a big deal but you start moving the entire silver market by 20 percent that's that's arguably an even bigger deal exactly so my question now is what caused this trade war between retail traders and uh and hedge funds neil what was the catalyst well i mean the wall street's Bets uh, thread on Reddit has been going for some time now, and it, uh, it's exploded in popularity. But there's a sort of um, there seems to be going to build up a momentum behind some posts, um, a couple of sort of leading sort of posters, uh, people on the thread uh, starting to try and pick on pick out um, hedge fund shorts. So they, they've been looking at stocks that have been heavily shorted, uh, stocks that have uh, been sort of unloved by the market. So. Um, are quite illiquid stocks, are quite thinly traded, um, and with heavy short positions, and that that landed them on um, on uh, on GME, GameStop, as well as AMC Entertainment, BlackBerry, Bed Bath and Beyond, uh, Nokia, and and some others as well, but but chiefly GameStop. Uh, that sort of drove the headlines anyway. Um, and they, they figured out a pretty good strategy of um, squeezing those shorts by really bidding it up, not selling, and coordinating some kind of effort there. Uh, so coordinating on, on the forum to buy them, also using some quite interesting call, call option strategies to, um, so you're not only forcing a short squeeze, you've got a gamma squeeze, whereby the dealers, uh, the dealers are selling these call options are needing to buy the underlying stock in order to yeah. hedge their position. And so that just creates this sort of cycle and swirl of of um, upward trend in the market for these particular names. Um, and uh, yeah, it seems to be sort of this kind of argument of fighting, you know, fighting hedge funds. That's sort of what's driving it. Um, but of course, it's, it's probably a little bit more complicated than that. I would think that probably hedge funds, uh, what you saw is obviously a lot of short covering. Uh, I think short, uh, hedge funds lost $20 billion on their shorts last month in total, according to S, uh, S3 partners, which monitors that. Um, 
so yeah it's been it's been incredible but i think you know short covering you've got retail retails buying and holding so there's not there's not been that much you know maybe as much sort of offer on the table as you might normally get uh, re hedge funds covering but also i think a lot of institutional plays here where they're front running these trades um you know question marks over whether robin hood is sell by selling the it sells an awful lot i think about 40 percent of its order flow goes to citadel which is one of these hedge funds that people have been talking about yeah. you know are they you know are they taking that data that order flow and essentially just front running every retail client trade so they know they know in a sort of split second beforehand what the retail clients are doing therefore they can jump in ahead of them as it were so lots of lots of things going on there um and uh silver's been swept up in it as well right question do retail traders always have the power of moving the markets their way neil or this was a one-off thing because i don't i don't really I believe it's it's very unusual i've not really seen anything quite like it i mean it's it's not um in a sense it's a speculative bubble um that is nothing new that, that we we always get speculative bubbles and it's driven by by crowds crowding into trades um i think what's unusual here is probably that it's um it's been a coordinated effort with a an agreement a sort of agree right we're going to bid up this stock right let's you know and that's the plan whereas you know many years before it just sort of happens organically people see a stock moving up and then they get in and then the next person gets in and before you know it there's lots of news around it and and, and before you know it gets it gets you know to a top this is this is pre predetermined by the re, by a crowd of traders now i mean i don't know if it's manipulation it's con it probably could be classed as concert trading um it's it's disruptive to the market for sure um and i think you know the you're going to see the sec need to do something about it what, whatever it is they do i'm not sure and it might be that what happens is you know some of the institutions get burnt you know robin hood could, could get burnt quite badly by this and that could be a big problem for the market so even if you don't say it's manipulation what it is is disruptive and um has implications therefore for hedge funds for robin hood and, and others this is not a normal practice I mean, going public and announcing, come on, let's boycott silver today, or let's boycott this company or this hedge fund. Is this normal market practice, Neil? No, <laughs> it's definitely not. I mean, I think that's the thing. It's sort of in, it's it's designed. It's designed not only is it saying let's bid up this stock and you know way beyond um, anything it could be valued at. Um, it's also saying the reason we're doing that is to attack hedge funds. Um, exactly. Which you know, I, I I don't quite understand myself. I don't I, I don't see anything wrong with naked short selling. It, it it's been a practice. It's been you know uh, on the go for, for for centuries or for certainly for for decades here. And uh, you know, it's it's um, it's it's a useful thing. It, it exposes bad companies. It exposes um, you know Enron, Wirecard. You know, I remember two years ago we were talking about how German regulators banned short selling on Wirecard. The problem wasn't the short sellers. The problem was it was a complete fraud. And, yeah. you know, I know Tesla's got a lot of fans, but, you know, the, the argument that that's another example where the reason there's lots of short sellers is because, you know, it's potentially a fraud. And so it's not it's not a bad thing to have short interest in a stock. I think it just it goes to highlight um, some of the problems that, that need to be exposed. And, and the thing is, I mean, we saw last week Citroen Research is thrown in the towel. So Citroen Research is a, a key cornerstone of the Wall Street short selling community. It's been issuing short, uh, re, you know, research, highlighting short um, opportunities for 20 years. And last week it said it would no longer do that. It will only focus on, on the long side. So you know, there's been some um, there's been some damage done in the market in the last uh, five five seven days, um, irrespective of what happens from now. But can can retail traders really compete with the hedge funds? Because what do you need to start a hedge fund in terms of of money versus what a retail trader can do? I mean, I, I'm sure if I talk to ten thousand retail traders and we all put money, everything we have, we don't have the the physical power of moving the market. We're competing with a hedge fund. 
So this leads me to the to the next question. What should I do now as a retail trader? Go with the Reddit crowd, stay with the hedge funds, or just remain independent? Well, it's probably best to do your own research as always, but I, I you know, it might be worth looking at the, you know, look at that Wall Street Bets forum. Just have a look. Uh, if you've not already, then have a look and see what's happening. I mean, because there's been um there's been a lot, of a lot of volatility around these names, and so you know, if you want to, if you want to trade that, then that's fine. But um, I would just say that anything that's being that's this volatile is very risky, um, and with all these cases, you know, sooner or later, GameStop will revert to where it should be, which is you know, sort of twenty dollars. <laughs> so that'll happen sooner or later. Just of course. Time very awkward the uh, beginning of 2021 now the other thing that caught my attention today was elon musk's uh, statement that uh, bitcoin is on the verge of uh, being more widely expected like we didn't know that the statement pushed bitcoin price up 14 percent yeah in a matter of minutes or hours yeah and considering elon musk did not hold any bitcoin until recently yeah again i see this as potential you know a bit of market manipulation and i'll explain to you why Elon Musk announced that he will exchange half of his net worth into Bitcoin, yeah? And a few days later, we see the Bitcoin going through the roof, going to 40 grand. What is the point of making this announcement if you believe inside that Bitcoin has real value? Well, I mean, it's uh, uh, <laughs> Elon Musk on Twitter is always a bit challenging. I mean, he's, he's got a checkered past there. You know, he was done by the SEC, I think, for... <laughs> it wasn't quite manipulation, but when he, he said he had funding secured on his $420 take private plan, you know, which is a load of nonsense. Elon Musk is one of these guys, he's going to tweet stuff like that and you've got to watch it. Um, it can be beneficial to you or it could be bad for you, but um, it's just something to keep an eye out for, I would think. I, I think it shows that, you know, there's there's certain people out there that are, are happy to, to, to jump on the bandwagon and drive an agenda, whatever that is. And... So he's, you know, with Chama, uh, whatever his name is, and, and the this social capital guy, you know, these guys are out for their own, they're out for their own ends. So you got to be careful then. Yeah. Exactly. This is what upset me a bit because we saw how Bitcoin was pulling back. Yeah, remember, we both did the analysis and we saw Bitcoin on a, on a downtrend, which was 100% normal and natural to happen after such a rally. Yeah, because people are, are closing their positions, they're cashing out. And now someone like Elon Musk, yeah, with a huge amount of Bitcoin, comes uh, out with a statement like this. Why would you make a statement like this to push the Bitcoin price a bit higher when you can clearly see that the Bitcoin price is, is tumbling? Well, it's, it's pretty obvious to me why you do that. It's, it's, to, it's to force the price higher. Because you know you what this it. reminds I mean, me of? of uh, JP Morgan uh, situation a few years ago when uh, Jamie Dimon said uh, Bitcoin is a fraud I don't believe in cryptocurrencies da 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 and shortly after he made the announcement that JP Morgan is launching its own cryptocurrency yeah exactly. it's a everyone's, everyone uh, everyone is always talking their own book that's the one the one thing to remember I think so can I still trade support and resistance uh, levels, Neil? Or we should all watch the news, watch, read it? Because Wall Street bets did something that will give them even more popularity than they already had. Okay, so can we still trade support resistance levels or it's all in the hands of uh, news? No, I think so. I think you can definitely still trade. I mean, Bitcoin's always a bit troublesome with that because it's, yeah. it's open to manipulation, you know, with Tether and, and all that. Uh, always be a bit careful with bitcoin uh, in general but um yeah i mean i think you can you know support and resistance levels and, and chart analysis just uh, describes what's going on in the market it shows you where there's buyers and where there's sellers so i think it's perfectly reasonable to do that and, and it still you know it still works um the you know some of the time maybe not all the time but um, <laughs> it still works um still a useful thing to have and um you know i think so key resistance key support levels are important because you, you know you get a feel for where the market clearly there's clearly buyers above or below or sellers above or below you know you get a feel for that from these sort of levels so uh, and that is important because a lot of the time the stops and limits and things are placed you know just beyond these levels or whatever just inside and so um you know it is important i think to to still to still pay attention to these things
Right, I'm with you. Now, one thing I want to show you, and then I'll uh, I'll let you go. Where are we? There we are. Right, we're looking at the Bitcoin charts. I don't know if you can see them. There we are. Okay, and this is what happened after um, Elon Musk's uh, statement. Yeah, we saw Bitcoin rallying from thirty-two four to five on Bitfinex up to thirty-eight four eight three. Wow! <laughs> wow! Yeah, it was a big move. <laughs> yeah, one single tweet. I, I'm I'm having twenty tweets a day, and no one even replies to them. <laughs> and Elon Musk <laughs> had one, and he managed to move the price of the market. Right. Still, we have a big week uh, ahead of us. What uh, what should we keep an eye on this week, Neil? Um, well, you got um, the uh, Bank of England meeting on uh, Thursday. Well, the, the meeting. Wednesday, but the, the 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 announcement on Thursday from the Bank of England, so chatter about negative rates could weigh on the pound. Something to watch out for. Um, we've seen the dollar really battling um, sort of key key kind of support levels at the moment, and really trying to hold. Uh, seems to be holding for the time being. So we could get um, you know dollar. The dollar does come back. That's going to be a problem for the rest of the market. Um, Amazon Alphabet earnings due up this week, I think, you know, still, so, you know, looking at based on Apple and Netflix earnings and Facebook record revenues, record income for Facebook last week should be pretty solid for Amazon and Alphabet, probably going to beat expectations. Um, and then um, non-farm payrolls day up on, uh, on Friday. So um, I think the non-farm payrolls, the interesting thing is that we saw that a couple of week, weekly initial claims prints in the middle of January, so beginning first couple of weeks of Jan. So just looking to see whether or not that, um, you know, has played out into, uh, you know, into soft monthly number, what it says about the US economy and the recovery and so on. So uh, that's, the, that's the other thing to watch this week. All right, I'll do a live one for for the NFP. I'll try and do a bit of live trading if compliance uh, agrees with it. Right, Neil Wilson, thank you ever so much for being with us today. I'll see you towards the end of the week, probably one day ahead of uh, the NFP. And let's see what on earth this week uh, has for us. Neil, thank you so much. Have a great week. Thank you. Cheers. Right, we had Neil Wilson with us today, guys, with uh, a lot of news, a lot of um, a lot of information. We're coming back live in 30 seconds with the charts of the day and the signals of the day, guys. We're already 20 minutes into the US trading session. Stay tuned. Keep your finger on the market pulse with the news alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right, and we're back, beautiful people, with uh, some stocks, guys. You know I love you. You know I can't uh, walk away without giving you some uh, some stocks to keep an eye on. We're looking at GameStop uh, stock, which uh, fell 0.4%. AMC Entertainment uh, stock rose 20%, and BlackBerry rose 3.1%. As volatility in a handful of uh, heavily short uh, shorted stocks continued against the backdrop of uh, continued restrictions in trading by Robinhood and others. ExxonMobil uh, stock rose one3 uh, percent uh, and Chevron uh, stock climbed 1.4 percent after the Wall Street Journal reported that the oil giants discussed a merger last uh, year as the oil price slumped into negative territory. The paper described uh, the talks as preliminary, but such a deal, if uh, were to occur, would uh, be one of the largest in corporate history. So very, very um, interesting to uh, to watch. We have a breaking news. Wall Street opens higher as uh, squeeze on hedge funds uh, eases. Dow uh, Jones up 230 points, guys. We're going to get to the charts in just a minute. Now, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What else uh, do we have? Virgin Galactic uh, rose 9.3% after the company announced on uh, Monday that it will redo its uh, aborted December um, flight test as early as February 13, even after Morgan Stanley downgraded its investment stance to equal weight from uh, overweight after the stock's recent sharp gains. 
Now, Tesla also rose 3.1% after uh, Piper Sandler raised its price target to a street high of $1,200 per share from $515 a share, citing new opportunities that will pay out uh, over decades. Okay, over decades, guys. Don't jump the gun yet. All right. Uh, CureVac stock rose 12% with the German drug maker set to get help from a buyer for its experimental COVID-19 vaccine in order to boost its manufacturing capacity. So keep on eye on CureVac. That's an interesting one to, uh, to look at. It might do really, really, really well. Now, let's have a quick look at the charts of the day, guys, and the signals of the day. We are already 20 minutes into the, um, the U.S. trading session. We saw a big, big spike on crude oil. Uh, a few minutes ago at the U.S. markets open, 52.59 for uh, crude oil as things uh, stand right now, with an un undecided RSI trading above the 50% mark, which usually indicates potential uptrend for uh, for the asset, and with an overbought uh, stochastic that is currently pointing downwards. Overall, the oil price is well supported by that 200 moving average, yeah, the red line that you see going from left to right. So anything uh, above that uh, might uh, be translated into buying power. Anything beyond that might be uh, translated into a bit of selling power. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's have a quick look at the euro US dollar, the most traded currency pair in the world, which it doesn't want to work uh, again today on, uh, on investing.com. Right. We're looking at the pound, guys. Usually they tend to do uh, similar. Yeah, 120.87 for the euro this afternoon, 120.88. And uh, 136.72 for the pound, which started dropping sharply in the last hour or so. Okay, again, we see a lot of people watching us today. Good afternoon, people. Type your questions if you have any, any questions, and I will do my best to help. Okay, so 136.72 for the pound this afternoon with the uh, stochastic still open to the downside and the RSI not reaching the oversold levels just yet. There is potential to the downside, guys. However... Keep an eye on uh, on this trend line. Yeah, we saw the um, the the pound retesting this and uh, and moving slightly lower. Yeah, we might see a false breakout, or who knows, the breakout might be real. Yeah, one thirty six seventy two. If the downwards movement will continue, probably traders will move their take profits to the downside towards the one thirty six forty one. Yeah, trying to catch about uh, thirty pips out of this movement. Yeah, or why not even lower? One thirty six fourteen, one thirty six fifteen is expected if this uh, downward uh, movement will continue. Now, we're looking at USDJPY. We see a green start of the week for the the green buck. 104.98 this afternoon for the USD versus the Japanese yen with the RSI and stochastic up into the overbought uh, levels. There is potential. There still is potential to the upside okay, for uh, for USDJPY. On the other hand, we see the Aussie dollar losing ground after a retest of that 50 MA uh, to the upside earlier on. 0.7615 for the Aussie dollar with the RSI and the stochastic pointing lower. Now, if this downward movement will continue short term, probably traders will eye the 0.75 95 mark as that's the previous low and if this movement continues then they will probably lower their take profit target somewhere around 75.69 or uh 75.22 somewhere in the 75s right usd cad on the other hand again a, a green uh, green opening this afternoon on the us trading session for the us dollar uh, 128.19, we see a bit of a push for the, the USD CAD. Probably traders are eyeing this uh, top at 128.71 this afternoon. Yeah, with the RSI and the stochastic still pointing upwards, still being open to what seems to be an interesting uh, potential buy position as things stand right now. Let's see. We need to wait for the markets to settle for a bit, guys. Now, uh, let's have a quick look at the S&P 500, which opened higher than uh, than it closed on Friday, but still below that uh, 200 moving average, 372.982, as things stand right now for the S&P 500, with the RSI and the stochastic pointing upwards. We have a few uh, names announcing today and tomorrow, guys, so uh, we should see a bit of movement yeah, on the S&P and the Dow. On the other hand, though, 
the fact that the U.S. Democrats uh, rejected Joe Biden's uh, proposal of $1.9 trillion as stimulus measures okay, might affect the U.S. Uh, indices. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's see what is happening with the Dow. Again, positive opening for the Dow. And we see the candlestick retracting half an hour into the U.S. trading session. 3.00.79.50 for the Dow Jones this afternoon. Once again, with the RSI and stochastic in uh, the oversold levels pointing upwards. However, we see this death cross being formed there let's see what uh, what might follow from here now this week guys or tomorrow we're going to have uh, about a hundred companies announcing a hundred companies that are part of the s p 500 okay some of them are part of the dow jones as well let's see if they manage to boost the the s p or the dow jones uh, price a bit Right, we're looking at the US dollar index, guys, once again on a one hour chart, um, 9084 for uh, the US dollar index this afternoon. Okay, we saw a negative opening. Uh, we see RSI stochastic turning around as things stand right now from the overbought levels, which uh, means we might see a tiny, tiny retest of that uh, 20 MA of that uh, blue line that you see there. Okay, and we take it from there. Overall, the dollar was supposed to strengthen today. We saw the USD CAD pair pushing higher. Okay, we saw USD JPY pushing, uh, pushing higher. So let's see what's going to happen. No, sorry, the USD can't push lower, guys. USD JPY pushed a bit higher. Right, so let's see. Let's see what's going to happen with the US dollar index. So far, so good for uh, gold futures, guys. Gold is in an uptrend, if even if very shy right now. $1,868.10 for uh, gold futures half an hour into the uh, US trading session. There is a battle uh, up there between uh, buyers and sellers, guys. You see, we don't have many engulfing candlesticks, okay, very short candlesticks, and a lot of spikes up and down. There is a battle indeed. Okay, we see the RSI not being able to go up into the overbought uh, levels. Okay, we see stochastic somewhere, somewhere close to the overbought levels, but still shy. Let's see, let's see. Now, light crude, guys, and uh, brace for um, for silver. We're going to get to silver charts in a minute. Okay, 55.51 for uh, Brent oil futures this afternoon. We see a... Um, a retest to the upside, yeah, followed by a retest of that 200 moving average. If this movement will continue, probably there is more potential to the downside, yeah, then to the upside. Okay, very important level as the price uh, action is now uh, testing the 200 moving average, guys. So any drop below that 200 moving average might translate into a bit of selling power, okay? Uh, if the price gets rejected by the 200 MA, then we might see the price moving uh, moving higher. This is one probable movement for uh, Brent oil futures. Yeah, we might see a retest to the lows to around 54, 94, and then we might see a retest to the upside. Okay, at least as things stand right now. And now silver futures, guys. There we go. There is the rally in silver again, supposedly created by by the gang on uh, on Reddit. Okay, $29.44 for silver. We see a bit of a pullback. Probably the guys that created this uh, this amazing uh, rally are cashing out the profits right now. They started closing their positions. Therefore, um, don't be surprised if we're going to see a bit of a meltdown. Okay, I'm surprised why gold futures did not follow just yet. Just yet. We see gold trying to push higher, but the movement is nowhere near the one we see on uh, on the silver charts so if usually silver follows gold guys today we see gold trying to follow silver yes yeah, silver is way way ahead okay 2894 we're gonna get to the signals guys in a minute so don't go anywhere right and now everyone's favorite guys the good almighty bitcoin which is being uh, manipulated by uh, brave statements on uh, social media is uh, trading today at thirty-three thousand five hundred and seventy-one dollars after a massive uh, swing in um, buy sell uh, over the weekend. Okay, on Friday or Saturday, this uh, this happened when uh, some rich guy, again another rich guy, not only Elon Musk. Okay, we must have more rich guys on Earth that uh, might have tweeted something. As things stand right now, we see a retest. The price is still supported by the the two hundred MA on a one hour chart. However, we don't see a lot of buying power in the market anymore. Yeah, we see uh, two two tops roughly at the same level, and since then. 
we see the the price uh, moving moving lower rsi stochastic are both pointing downwards as things stand right now let's get a better view on the bitcoin there we go all right on a four hour chart again we see a red candlestick so don't be surprised if we're going to see a retest of that 200 moving average at around the $33,578. Okay, this is again from the technical point of view, guys. And uh, what I've taught in many, many years of trading, about 10 years, is that usually technical analysis on some assets weights heavily, uh, more heavily than um, than whatever news you might uh, you might get. Right now, Ethereum, guys, in the same time. Okay, we see maybe, maybe uh, the beginning of a, of a downtrend for Ethereum, um, $1,314.76 this afternoon for Ethereum. Okay, even though it's in an uptrend, guys, we see uh, a bit of weakness here at the top. Okay, this might be translated as a double top, okay, which uh, usually is the trigger for the beginning of the downtrend. Okay, so don't be surprised if you're going to see a retest to the downside of that 200 MA at 1131 Okay, somewhere there right guys once again if you have questions if you have anything you're struggling with regarding investments online trading cryptocurrencies do let me know type your comments and i will see them live and i will do my best to reply as soon as possible now let's move on let's move on and have a quick look at some uh, trading signals uh, provided by investing.com this afternoon let's hope the markets have settled uh, by now Okay, we're starting with Euro USD, guys, neutral on a five minutes and a 15 minutes chart, and the hourly and daily remain a strong sell. Okay, we're looking at the pound versus the US dollar with uh, three red this afternoon, strong sell uh, positions, even though the daily remains a strong buy. Okay, we see the uh, USD JPY strengthening for uh, strong buy positions on the USD JPY. We saw the rally on the charts a minute ago. USD CHF is pulling back, apparently, strong sell on a five minute chart sell on a 15 minute but the hourly and daily remain a strong buy so we might only witness a bit of a pullback as things uh, stand right now and then the price might shoot up as the us dollar seems to be strengthening against all its other peers the aussie dollar took a beating again strong sell all red for the uh, the aussie dollar this afternoon versus the us dollar we saw the euro um, on a strong buy uh, versus the the pound it was in a strong sell all over the the chart uh, half an hour ago so apparently now traders are uh, coming on the market with uh, with buy positions the daily remains a strong sell though so keep an eye on those uh, those tops in the left hand side on the euro gbb chart and the price might turn around from there usd cad on the other hand four strong buy for the us dollar Okay, the Kiwi dollar is a sell versus the uh, the US dollar. The euro, strong buy versus the Japanese yen. What is strengthening the euro this afternoon? I'm really curious. Yeah, and the euro again, strong buy versus the Swiss franc. On the other hand, guys, the pound is uh, nose diving versus the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc with strong sell indications on three of the four time frames. This is what's happening on the currencies uh, side of things. Let's have a look at commodities, guys. See what investing.com sees uh, on commodities this afternoon. Come on, please load. Okay, I don't know if you notice, sometimes the charts can be... Um quite heavy heavy delayed there we go right gold and silver uh, overall we see a potential strong buy position on gold nothing is happening yet neutral as things stand right now but on the hourly and daily charts we're looking at strong buy for gold strong buy for silver okay which is uh, currently pulling back a bit now copper is uh, set with uh, all red for strong sell positions on copper this afternoon crude oil wti and brent oil again stuck in a strong sell on uh, two uh, time frames natural gas is on a strong buy as the winter seems to be very very heavy in the us okay so usually when the winter is uh, is heavy people uh, tend to purchase a lot of gas yeah for um, heating up their homes so in heavy winter usually natural gas price tends to go up us wheat guys strong sell on the us wheat which done uh, very well the previous week right now quick look at the us indices guys let's have a quick look and see how investing.com sees the indices this afternoon mixed 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 apart from the dow jones which has a strong uh, sell indication on all four time frames okay a lot of mixed signals the markets uh, seem to be um, 
to be very dodgy this Monday. We see the Russell 2000, the small cap 2000 again with a, with a strong sell on a five minute and a strong sell on an hourly chart. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's happening. I'm going to have a quick look at um, at stocks right now. The U.S. stocks, the Wall Street stocks, maybe, maybe there is an indication for some uh, some interesting long positions. Nope. Again, on the stock side of things, uh, a lot of red on the charts with ExxonMobil with uh, four strong sell indications. Apple, three strong sell indications. Procter & Gamble and IBM again, all red, four uh, strong sell indications. Right, a lot of red uh, on the charts this afternoon, guys. General Electric and JP Morgan are expected to drop with four strong sell. AT&T and Chevron once again are expected to drop with four strong sell indications. The only one that seems to be doing a bit better is uh, Intel, guys, which has three strong buy out of the four. And uh, Citigroup and Bank of America once again, four strong sell indications on all four timeframes, as well as Walmart. Okay, now four green for Alphabet A. All right, the the ex Google. This is what uh, what is happening on the markets today, guys. This is the uh, the indication from Investing.com, and these are the charts. Okay, provided uh, by Investing.com. Again, there seems to be a bug on uh, on the Euro USD on the charts. The other ones uh, work. Okay, the pound, which again is uh, is dragging uh, is dragging heavily. Right. Okay, guys, ladies, gentlemen, traders, happy Monday, everyone. This was it from my side today. Join me again tomorrow for another round of market talks. And who knows, maybe I have another guest for you. Until then, remember to trade responsibly and may all your trades be in the money.